Now we get to the off-road tyres. This is something that I don't see much discussed on the internet and it's not even that well documented in books and I feel a lot of this is because people don't understand off-road tyres well and that's including myself. I'm going to put it out right now. I am no expert on off-road tyres but I do know a lot about regular tyres and I do know a fair bit about off-road. So let's see how we go here. To start with, on asphalt or road racing, you work the tyre. You're all about working the tyre. The ground is pretty solid. On dirt though, it's not as simple. You're working the ground and the tyre. It's a, a harmony between the two of them. And because dirt surfaces and rocky surfaces, any sort of loose surface can actually slide, what you end up with is an effective slip angle, not only on your tyre, but on your road surface as well. And this is what makes off-road tyre analysis so difficult because depending on your surface, your tyre curves can be completely wrong. As you could probably tell from my road section, road tyres don't need tread because they fill the asphalt. They only need it to displace water in the rain. Off-road tyres, on the other hand, do need tread because they need to dig into that ground. And if you were to consider the ground here, we come along with a flat tyre, just dead straight. Now, unless we're dealing with something like sand, which is just going to deflect really easily immediately, we need to have some way of cutting up this ground. If we just have a flat tyre, it's just going to skim. It's not going to give us great grip. So we end up putting lots of grooves on tyres. Now, obviously, the location, nature, number, all that sort of thing in our grooves depends on whether we're running in mud, rocks, sand. It all makes a massive difference. But let's just go with the basics now. We have these grooves and they will cut into our material. So what we'll end up with is that this will sort of bulge out to meet there as this presses down on it. So our new ground plane will go sort of up, up, up. And obviously the lateral grooves across, they will help with the forward grip by cutting that way. The key thing to notice here is that we're actually cutting and that means that you need tires with lugs with really sharp edges. I was at an off-road race round one time and the guys there, really big expensive guys that like you can't hope to match on budget, they have tires like thousand dollar a pop tires that they were changing out after each round of the race and that was like a four round race weekend. And the reason they do that, the reason why off-road is changing those tires so much, even though they're not really getting that worn because they're quite hard tires, is because they want to maintain these razor sharp edges. And the sharper you get those edges, like if you look at, take a close look at a rally car tire, those sharp edges will bite nicely into the ground and really help with that. The aggressiveness of the tread depends too on what you're doing, like I mentioned previously. Dirt bikes, which are quite light, but often drive in really loamy peat when you're talking about like a motocross or something like that, obviously you have those little knobbies and they work great when you can really dig in hard. But if you were to get that and ride it on a, a really hard loose dirt, like I've often ridden my bike against people on full knobbies on that, you'll find that it actually won't have, if it's really hard pack, that much more grip than say a more sort of road bias tire, which has bigger treads and a larger sort of surface area with less cutting area. 